Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. IRS Treasury release state-by-state -state data on third round of economic impact payments. IR 2021-136, June 29, 2021, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service and the Treasury Department released information today detailing how many people in each state received the third round of economic impact payments through early June. So we're on the third round of the economic impact payments tracking the payments that have gone out within it. The new details available on SOI tax stats, coronavirus aid, relief, and economic security act, the CARES Act statistics, there's a link to that here, are through June 3rd and provide a look at the number of payments by state, income category, filing status, and other features. There's a link to those items here. The IRS continues to distribute economic impact payments and related 2020 recovery rebate credit on a weekly basis as people continue to file income tax returns and as returns are processed. Ongoing payments will be sent to eligible individuals for whom the IRS previously did not have information to issue a payment but who recently filed a tax return as well as people who qualify for the quote plus up end quote payments. So basically it looks like the IRS still sending out payments. They should have gotten the payments you would think to all kind of like the normal circumstance type of situations at this point in time, meaning people that had filed the tax return in the past and they have the information to send that out. And now they're still processing the tax returns. It looks for things like changes in the tax return. So people that are giving the IRS information they did not have before, possibly by filing a tax re return, then they're still sending those out. And there's that plus up type of situation. You'll recall that that's the situation that if you filed in 2019, you might have had more income in 2019. You might have had a cap or something like that in 2019 on the economic impact payments due to having more income. Whereas if it was based on 2020 or 2000, 2020, you would think possibly the income would be lower. And if you file the 2020 tax return in that situation, you may qualify for this plus up. Uh, type of payment due to that type of situation and apparently they're still picking those types of returns up and still sending out some uh, payments based on them so the statistics released today provide details on more than 163 million payments worth approximately 390 billion dollars special reminder for those who don't normally file a tax return Although payments are automatic for most people, the IRS continues to urge people who don't normally file a tax return and haven't received an economic impact payment to file a 2020 tax return to get all the benefits they're entitled to under the law, including tax credits such as the 2020 recovery rebate credit, the child tax credit, and the earned income tax credit. So if you haven't gotten any of the economic impact payments, then you probably want to file the tax return. It would be the best thing to do generally to file the tax return. They have that non-filer tool back up and running as we've seen in previous uh, releases here by the IRS. So that would be like a simpler thing to do if you're not required to file a tax return and you don't want to file a tax return. However, uh, it might be beneficial to file the tax return even though it might be a little bit more difficult even if you're not required to given the fact that they have all these refundable credits. They, they're like supercharging the refundableness of refundable credits and whatnot. So even if you don't owe money, then you might want to file a tax return or if someone hasn't done so that you know, then you might want to do that. There is free file software on the IRS, so you could check out irs.gov free file for income under a certain threshold. While filing the 2020 tax return will also assist the IRS in determining whether someone is eligible for an advance payment of the 2021 child tax credit, which will begin to be dispersed this summer. For example, some federal benefit benefits recipients may need to file a 2020 tax return even if they don't usually file to provide information the IRS needs to send payments for a qualifying dependent. Eligible individuals in this group should file the 2020 tax return as quickly as possible to consider for an additional payment for the qualified dependents. So, you know, obviously if the IRS doesn't have the dependent information, they can't send out the advanced child tax credits so you want to give them that information so they can figure out this advanced child tax credit start sending those checks out 
So people who don't normally have an obligation to file a tax return and don't receive federal benefits may qualify for these economic impact payments. This includes those experiencing homelessness and others, individuals who don't get a first or second round economic impact payment or get less than the full amounts may be eligible for the 2020 recovery rebate credit, but they'll need to file the 2020 tax return. So if someone didn't get the full amount of the economic impact payments of round one or round two, remedy, file the 2020 tax return and the recovery rebate credit will basically is designed to pick that up. Round three is, is going to be, you can also file 2020 tax return if you didn't receive round three to give the IRS the information in order to calculate that as well. See the special section on irs.gov claiming the 2020 recovery rebate credit if you aren't required to file a tax return. There's a link to that here. Free, uh, there's free tax return preparation is available for qualifying people. There's a link to that here. The IRS reminds taxpayers that the income level in the third round of economic impact payments have changed. This means that people who won't be eligible for the third payment, even if they received a first or second economic impact payment or claimed a 2020 recovery rebate credit, payments will begin to be reduced for individuals making 75000 or less. So in other words, there's an income cap where the credit starts to phase out 75,000 or less for individuals, 150,000 for married filing jointly, the payments end at 80,000 for individuals. So if you're individual, you're over the 80,000, you're not going to get the the credit in that case, 160,000 for married filing jointly. People with adjusted gross income above these levels are ineligible for the payment. Individuals can check the get my payment tool. There's a link to that here on irs.gov to see the payment status of these payments. Additional information on economic impact payments is available at irs.gov, irs.gov, the IRS website.